Hey, Facebook friends, uh, we're going to try this again. I tried this earlier. We had a few technical difficulties. The hard part is I'm going to have to be holding this because for some reason, even though I turned on the auto rotate for my screen, uh, it was kind of stuck in a certain uh, format. So um, now hopefully you'll be able to, to see this and I could uh, go ahead and share what I was going to share on this Monday. Uh, this is Monday of Holy Week. So on this Monday, um, it's a unique time for us, you know, as a people, as a nation, uh, we realize that uh, we are sheltered in place and uh, we're having to stay home. So it's a different kind of uh, a different kind of Holy Week this week. Usually there'd be a lot of events at the church with people gathering together, but now it feels a little bit different for everyone to be separated in, in different places. Um, you know, I think about the last week of Jesus, and he knew that it was going to be the last week of his life. Um, I think about the plans that he made, and one of the things that I, I see is that in this last week of Jesus' life, he planned a dinner to be with family, to be with, with friends, um, the, the family really of the body of Christ. Not only did he have um, his Passover plan, but Previous to that, it says six days before the Passover. This is out of John chapter 12. It says, Jesus came to Bethany. So this would be on Monday of Holy Week. He came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Isn't that such a cool thing that during the last week of Jesus' life, and he knew that it was going to be the last week of his life, that he wanted to gather together with these close friends of his. They went to Martha and Mary and Lazarus' home. And when they had this dinner, Mary did something that was just extraordinary, surprising, shocking. It says that Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. That's a, an incredibly intimate and in some ways it would be very uncomfortable to be the recipient of that. Uh, when I was in college, we had a Bible study. And I'll never forget, we were um, in John chapter, um, John chapter 13 actually. And I had a friend that said, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a foot washing service. And he had us take off our shoes and he wanted to wash our feet. And I just felt like, man, that that felt very awkward. It felt very strange. Um, and that's in our culture. But in that culture, washing someone's feet would be a way of um, taking care of them. And usually it would be the servant that would do that. The difference at this point in time is that it's not a servant that's doing that, but it's it's Mary. And this woman, who is a friend of Jesus, not only washes his feet, but anoints him with this oil that is so costly that it would be like the equivalent of her dowry. This would be like a, um, a 300-day wage type of expense. Can you imagine how much money do you make in 300 days? Then she not only pours the oil over Jesus and then washes his feet, but she uses her hair to do this. Now, when she does this, it says the whole house was filled with the fragrance of this perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one that was about to betray Jesus, he said, hey, why is she doing this? This is such a waste. We should take the money. We should, we should sell this and then we could use it to feed the poor. But he really didn't have that intention because as um, one of the, the men that was um, responsible for the money, he would steal from that. And so he looked at it as a way of, you know, he's not going to benefit from all of the money from this costly ointment. And Jesus said, leave her alone that she may keep it for uh, the day of my burial. She's preparing me for burial. For the poor you have with you always, but you do not always have me. So I want you to consider just a few lessons from this passage out of John chapter 12. Jesus knew that it was going to be the last day, uh, the last week of his life. And he came to this dinner party and Mary does this incredible thing to prepare him for burial. And the fragrance goes through the whole room. 
I would venture to say that the fragrance continued throughout the time that Jesus is walking around um, during the time that he comes into Jerusalem, then he leaves Jerusalem. I, I think that that fragrance was was something that they remembered. And the next time they smelled that fragrance, you know what scents can do? Like the scent of a fresh cut Christmas tree, it, it brings you right back to that place, doesn't it? it? It brings you right back to that. I remember where I was the last time I smelled this smell. It was an act of worship on Mary's part. And you know, worship um, really has a lot to do with what something is worth. There's a, a Latin word for where we get the word worship, and it's worthship. And worthship, it, it speaks directly to the cost, the value of the thing or the person that's being worshiped. And in this case, what Mary is showing is that Jesus is so worthy that even though this seems like it's extravagant, that this seems unbelievably generous and in some ways even wasteful, that she thinks that Jesus is absolutely worth it. Now, when Jesus says that the poor, you know, because Judas uses this excuse and he says, hey, this should have been sold so that we could give it and we could feed the poor. And he was just making an excuse that really wasn't his heart. When Jesus says, the poor you have with me always, but you do not always have me, you know, she's doing it to prepare me for my burial. Um, it's not a cop out for, for helping the poor. We, we should be concerned with those that are less fortunate, less well off, especially during these days of this COVID-19 shelter in place. You probably know people like I do that are out of work. There are some people that their hours are reduced. There are some people that don't know um, how they're going to continue to live where they're living. So even though you and I, other people may have saved up money, maybe you're okay at this point in time, um, there's something about love that shows um, love in sacrifice. Really, that's what agape love is. It's a love of sacrifice. Jesus said, no greater love has anyone than this, than that someone would lay down his life for his friends. So when we look at this love that Mary shows to Jesus, um, there's a situation that will not always continue the same way. He said, I'm not always going to be with you. So what she's doing, she's doing for me. Right now, we're in a place where we won't always be sheltering in place, Lord willing. Things will change. But I want to ask you this question. What is the opportunity in this difficult time that you will not always have, but you have it right now? For me, I'm at home today and my daughters are at home. It's their spring break, which is a bummer because usually on spring break, we would go and we'd visit my mom down in Southern California, or we would you know, take this time to go on a, a camping trip or a hike, or we would go to you know, Disneyland or wherever it might be. But right now we're at home. And I consider this as an opportunity because we're not always at home together. In fact, our lives get so busy that, that sometimes I long for those days when they were younger and we just stayed home together. Last night, we played games. We, we stayed up. We, we talked. And it was, such a, it was such a cool night. And I think that when we consider the opportunities that are before us, that we're not going to have these same situations. Now... I want to share something on a personal note. I I was just going to share today. I had planned on this Monday to share this devotional of what happened during that Monday of Jesus's last life on earth. And I I was struck by the fact that he knew everything that was going to happen. You know, my mom, um, she just went to be with Jesus a, a week ago, last Saturday. And I think she knew that it was her last time on earth. I, I think she knew her time was short. In fact, I'm, I'm positive of it. And me and my siblings, we all are because the amazing thing that happened is that on Thursday and Friday of that week, she started to go down this list of people that she knew and people that she loved. And she started to make phone calls. Now, what my mom was suffering from was something called congestive heart failure, which means that it's difficult to breathe. Um, 
I'm an asthmatic as a kid growing up when I couldn't breathe. I would have to prop myself up and hold myself in a way so that I could get air into my lungs. But my mom had fallen the week before, um, not even a whole week before. She she fell and she broke three of her ribs. Um, and that made that makes everything painful. I've had a broken rib where I couldn't cough. I couldn't sneeze. Anything I would do was painful which means that my mom, to make those phone calls, would have to prop herself up and she would have to exert effort and energy in order to make those calls to let people know that she loved them, to let people know that she was thankful for them. See, when she called me, she called me on Friday right before I went on to Facebook Live at 11.50. She was with my sister. And my sister Lily called and said, Hey, Matt, uh, mom wanted me to call you and she wanted you to pray for her. So I said, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go on Facebook Live in a minute, but but yeah, let's go ahead and pray it. I I prayed for my mom. I prayed that God would give her peace. I prayed that God would give her strength. I prayed that in her, her last days that they would be wonderful, that God would use these things in her life. Um, Hung up the phone. Later on that afternoon, my mom called me back probably about four in the afternoon and she said, Matthew, I just want to thank you and Deanna and Rebecca and Nate and Matthew and Josiah and Alicia and Abigail for all of the love and the prayers, for all of the support that you've given me over the years. Forgive me if there's been any unpleasantries. I love you. God bless. Goodbye. And she hung up. And after she hung up, I, I wanted to say something, but she she was kind of done with her what she wanted to say, the next day was my plan to go down to Southern California to visit her. Um, I had packed everything up and I had to stay here in Santa Cruz for those uh, two weeks. I had responsibilities and also I I was concerned for her health. Um, I didn't want to expose her to anything. So I, I kind of wanted to wait for me to make sure that I was um, healthy. And the next morning on Saturday morning, my brother had called and said, hey, Matt, um, you know, mom's with dad now. And I was devastated because I didn't get a chance to get down there and see her face to face one last time. But you know what? I think that's okay. And I think that's okay because I think my mom even knew that it would be better for me to be here with my girls and to be here with Josiah and Deanna and and with Kenny and to, to let them know. I share that in the context of what happened in the last week of Jesus because he said something. He said, the poor you have with you always. In other words, you should always take opportunities to bless others, to give, to help, to serve. But I'm not always going to be with you. And you know what? The people that we love are not always going to be with us. We have opportunity in the here and the now. We have the opportunity today to let people know that we love them. To let people know that Jesus loves them. To share the gospel in this week leading up to Easter, I want to encourage you to film your own testimony. Take maybe a minute and just share how Jesus has changed your life. And then post it on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram with a hashtag Jesus changed my life because we don't have always the people that we love around us and those people will not always have us. So this week, take time to spend with Jesus. Take time to turn things off and turn off the news and to get quiet and to thank him. Make a list of gratitude of all the things that you're thankful for, or, or many of them, because you you don't have enough time to write all of them. And let me a- encourage you to do something else. Make a list of people this week and in the weeks to come that you want to call, that you want to write to, that you want to say thank you to, and let them know. Because those opportunities are fleeting. And sometimes you have that idea to do it, and by the time that you're ready to do it, It's kind of like that moment has passed. Um, Remember this, Jesus loves you. 
He loves you so much that he came into this world to experience what we experience, the pain, the loneliness, the suffering, even the physical exertion and the difficulty. Why? Because he wanted to relate to us so that when he says, I understand, we don't have a God that's distant. We have a God who came in human flesh, who knows what we go through. So share that love with others this week. I love you guys. Um, this is such a blessing for me to be able to share with you. And uh, it's a little bit of normalcy in a really crazy time. So Lord willing, I will see you tomorrow. And uh, again, hashtag Jesus changed my life. God bless you guys.